everybody, I'm Andrew again with Integrity Pro Roofing. Today we're going to go over doing a roof inspection. I'm going to kind of go through our top things we look at at every situation and uh, point out the, the good and the bad, what we see. Alright, so First thing we do is when we get up the roof, I look for what we call soft metal. So that's usually chimney caps, so things like this, or we have box vents, I'll show you. And what we're doing is we're looking for dents, so I don't know if the camera can pick it up. We've got a few dents here. Let's see if we can, uh, might need chalk. But we've got a little dent here, a little dent here. This isn't really anything to worry about, um, but this is what we check first for hail damage. And the reason why we're checking for hail damage is if, you're, if your property is going to change hands and you're the new buyer on a property and they have hail damage, especially severe damage, and it's not called out and made notice of, you're actually, the buyer's insurance can drop them and exclude the roofing policy. So that's why I want to make a specific point to talk about it in this video. Uh, but this first thing to do is we check here. And once we go to here, I usually go to the ridges because that's where it's going to have the most damage. Um, so we come back up here to the ridge. Now here, we can get down. This actually has a ridge vent. So actually the whole roof is vented by ridge vent. So you can see I can put my hands all the way underneath here. So the airflow is coming from the soffiting up along the underside of the roof and coming back out and cooling the roof. Um, but I check here for hail damage again. This is the most common area it's going to damage. And this is just to figure out what size of hail hit the roof and if there's anything to look for. Ridge looks good. Nothing to really look on here. Um, so the next thing we're going to look at I'm gonna come over to, we got solar on this roof. More and more in Colorado, this is becoming really, really common to have solar. Uh, there's not really a lot to look for on the roof, except for a couple things. Um, along here, if you live under trees, like I've got trees right up here. Let's see, we got a bunch of trees, so this whole area can get covered in leaves. We just wanna make sure that this isn't built up with leaves all along here, because then it can actually cause ice and snow to dam up against here and kind of back up the roof. And we get a lot of leaks from that, especially if there's a pipe here, a skylight or something really close to the solar, it leaks all the time. So that's one thing we look, just look around here. Um, and that's really all you gotta look at for solar. That's all we do anyways. Uh, next thing is we look at our valleys. So one really good section here is when you've got a, a dormer or a porch or an extension to the to the uh, house coming into the other roof. You've got two roofs that join together. This connection is really important. Um, a lot of times there's broken ridge caps here. They're cracked. Um, there's nails, exposed nails right in the valleys. Uh, all sorts of kind of shenanigans going on there. But we don't really worry about it. This is all good. Um, yeah, everything's good here. You can see where we transition from the ridge vent here and it kind of rolls down. Uh, that's why you see that gap, but it's nothing to worry about again because it's a ridge vent. Um, next thing is the valleys going down here. This is really critical when you're on a first story roof and you got a second story above you and you've got a valley. That's it. some similar situation, but you got a second story above it. The reason being is right in here, we see where people set up ladders. So they're trying to figure out how to get their ladder stable and how they feel comfortable up there. And we'll see ladder feet go right through the valley all the time or other just holes or things like that. You really want to check it. That's where a lot of water can really get into your property through that way. But again, our, ours are good. Nothing to look at here, so. Next thing we want to check out is the gutters. So in this particular situation, we actually, the gutters are actually have gutter guards on them, which is kind of rare. It's, it's becoming more and more common out here, but um, you know, we just want to make sure this isn't full of debris, like leaves and sticks and stuff like that. Um, and then if you have gutter guards, you want to make sure the the one drawback to gutter guards is it can trap and hold a lot of leaves and debris right in this area. So if you get a lot of ice, like warm and thaw, warm and thaw, it can actually ice dam here and run up the roof. So you just want to make sure there's no debris and there's, there's virtually nothing here. So there's nothing to worry about. All right. So here's a section where we're just talking about our gutter guards and debris piling up where this is actually a problem. As you can see, a lot of debris is piling up here. And so during the summer, this really isn't that isn't really a problem. Uh, but during the winter time, again, this can build up dam. Ice can come up the roof. So this is one of the things we want to look for and just clean off. Uh, just something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. A leaf blower works great just to run around the house. 
blow these off from above. It takes like five minutes. Uh, but that's just the main thing you want to check with gutter guards. But it keeps your gutters clean and causes a lot less problems from water backing up when your gutters are full. So it's still well worth getting gutter guards. So next, we're just looking at all of our penetrations coming through the roof. Uh, this one, again, we talked about soft metals in the beginning. This cap is actually more of an aluminum cap. What we looked at was more of a metal cap. Um, there's more dents in here. Again, I don't know if you can see it in the, in the, with the camera, but um, you can see where the paint's chipped off. It's all from hail. Uh, again, this, this would maybe be something to worry about, but it, we actually know we actually have impact-resistant shingles on this roof, so this isn't anything to worry about. But again, this is a really good telltale sign to know if it's worth investigating for hail damage. Um, next when we're looking at it, we just want to look to make sure uh, all of our penetrations are good. So a real common spot right here is where these two pieces of metal are folded together. They're machine folded. Um, want to make sure this is sealed, which this has been sealed here. Uh, a storm collar. This is the secondary piece here. It's just because this jack does not actually have a tight fit on here. So we just want to make sure it has this. And this can also be caulked here um, to check. On a lot of older homes, uh, you see that these are actually rusted and you're actually, you know, it might be double wall pipe like a B vent. This can actually be rusted, so that's a good thing to call out. Unfortunately, that's an HVAC problem. They have to come out and replace it. It's not a roofing problem because um, it gets into your whole venting, your whole um, furnace system and all that. And that kind of, there's liability associated with that. So do that. Next thing we just checked, make sure our caps are actually screwed on. So you can see there's actually a screw here. Um, there should be two to three screws per code just so this cap doesn't blow off. If this blows off, water comes straight down into your furnace and rusts out parts to your furnace that cause problems. So I'm not an HVAC guy, <laughs> but it's not good. Um, all right. So the next thing is swamp coolers, really common here in the Denver market. <clears throat> There's a lot of different ways these are installed. So anyways, this is just one of the ways, obviously. Uh, one is you got your line coming in. This is actually power. Sometimes your water line also comes through. And sometimes we see these, they just come through, there's just a hole drilled through the roof and your pipe comes through with some little sealant around it. And that's really not effective. This is the way it should be done. Some sort of a roof jack that this comes through. In this scenario, they tied in the, the leg as well. Um, but anyways, this is kind of how it should be. It's a really good thing to notice. You know, you don't want a copper line or a quarter inch black line just coming right through the roof. That We see that all the time. Uh, next, just check your you know, your connections to the roof. And in this scenario, this is just caulked um, right over the screws. It's actually caulked underneath the, the foot when they set it down. So that's a fair way of doing that. And that's, that's, that's totally acceptable. Uh, then we come to the plenum. Sometimes these are coming directly underneath um, the actual swamp cooler, or sometimes they come to the side. This is the part that's different on every one. We're really only looking for the roof connection. Um, and so we see this all the time where HVAC contractors will cut this through the roof and they just run a bead of sealant along it and they don't flash it. And so that sealant cracks, lets water through it, and it just follows your duct work all the way inside and can leak. So this is how it should be done. Some sort of a counter flashing. There's actually step flashing underneath here between each shingle. You have this little uh, kick out or diverter kind of at the end of it just to get the water running down that direction. And then you have some sort of a flashing coming across the top here. Uh, so that's also good. And then when we're checking here, whenever we have counter flashing, you always check to make sure this bead of sealant at the top is fully sealed, which it is. It's a little worn and weathered because uh, there's this tar on top sliding down on it, but that's all sealed, so that, that passes inspection on that one as well. Another thing, this is kind of different. You don't always see this where the solar line, the actual power line, is running on the roof this far, but we have two different solar arrays set up so that's why it looks like this. Solar companies are generally really good with this and again you can see this is actually a bracket that holds it but they put it underneath the shingles so everything's fully fastened it's done correctly but this this little bracket slides underneath and the shingles go over top so everything's watertight uh, but just kind of something cool to look at. You don't see that very often on a roof. So here we are on, we've got several valleys all coming together. This is kind of a unique part of a roof as well. Um, we've got, and this is just three different pitches that are coming in. So we've got a pitch coming in here, a really low slope pitch coming here, and another pitch coming here. Um, two different kind of valley levels here. 
nothing to really keep in mind on valleys. The main thing is you just don't want a pile of leaves all piled up here because that, that can cause water damming during the winter time. So just make sure that's clear and clean. Other than that, you're pretty much good. Um, you know, code requires our, our line of shingles here when you come through. So the valley actually ends more like right here. It's about two inches out and then it starts transitioning up. You do want to make sure your shingles are uphill from that. So about two inches from the center. It's a little hard to see because it's the shingles roll here, but you can actually see that. And that's something good to watch out. Sometimes we see these shingles are even in the valley or hanging over and that just channels water back into the shingles and you kind of have to redo your valley on that. But that is something we see every year for sure. Um, but yeah, just make sure your valley is clean of debris and there's no holes in it. That's really all you gotta look for. Uh, next thing we wanna look at is your electrical mast. So every property is slightly different on this again. Sometimes this, this mast is actually fastened on the outside wall and the power comes in below the roof line. Uh, for this scenario, this is one floor. It's just a one story and the, the patio is pretty close. So this comes in above the roof and this is most pretty common. Um, and when you do this, the number one thing to look for, so this roof is about five, six years old, um, but a lot, it's really common that the roofers don't replace this pipe jack. And so we talked about it early in pi other pipe jacks, but really check this one. Sometimes every other pipe jack on the roof will look great, but you get to this one and it's completely rotted out. And it's because it's been reused. So this, this is easy to replace again as well, but it's a really good spot to check. And then also when it comes through the roof, this is more of an electrical thing. So you'd have to defer to your electrical contractor, but sometimes these main masts can be really tipping and they're just, they're really wobbly, but you can see this one, this one's really solid. And so that's important. But if it's really leaning or really wobbly, that's something you should get taken care of as well. Um, and that can just be done by a roof support system. Do an anchor here and tie it back to the roof. Uh, it can be fixed underneath, depending on the scenario. But uh, just another good thing to look for on your roof. So we've seen these, you know, completely bent over and, uh, you know, needing some major work and nobody else was catching that. So good thing to look for in that. Perfect. All right. Uh, another thing to look for when you have back porches tying into your main roof. So you can see we're on a back porch here. We see this a lot because porches are done a lot of times without permits, especially when it's in the back of the house. Uh, homeowner does it or some contractor, and they don't do it appropriately. We really see it on the roofs especially. So technically, we have actual shingles here. I don't know if you can see that, um, but we're pretty low slope. This is actually a 212 pitch roof. Uh, technically, you can do shingles on this as long as it's double felt or ice and water, but we see this all the time where there's a lot of leaking, and people don't think of it as leaking because it's over unconditioned space, meaning it's just open underneath, there's lawn chairs, nobody notices a roof leak typically. So uh, it's something just good to look for. Um, these shingles apart from the main house, you know, many times the back roof needs to be redone because it's leaking so bad and they put shingles on it when they shouldn't have, uh, or some sort of roll roofing material and it's just done in incorrectly because the homeowner did it or something like that. So um, anyway, it's just another really good thing to look for. Um, thing you want to look for is any exposed nails or anything like that that's on the roof deck. Um, sometimes, if, especially on older homes, roofs can work their way back, nails can work their way back through the roof uh, just because older plywood, things like that, the nails don't hold as well. So we always check for that for nail pops, look for any other penetrations or holes or things like that. Um, here you can see it's actually done correctly. Well, I mean, one of the ways you can do it, the other way is to replace the shingles, but um, they actually had an old anchor nailed in here for <clears throat> when they're doing the solar. It actually sealed it and that's acceptable. I mean technically you can replace those shingles as well but um, this also works. You know it's very functional at that point. The other thing too is to talk about is uh, venting. So I know I mentioned a little bit, er a little bit earlier but um, for roof venting there's two ways to do it. It's, this is really important in older homes. They many times miss this. Is One you can do a ridge vent which is what we've done here. Uh, this has got ridge vent all the way through it so I can put my hands underneath here and there's soffit venting so it allows air to come up and cool the roof and then come back out through the ridge vent. Uh, the other one is to have actual slant back or turtle vents we call them. It's just a square box that sits about that high off the roof and that goes to be vented as well. So when we're doing a roof inspection that's one of the things we also really look for because 
a lot of times that's not been done properly and so when your roof is not being cooled properly uh, a lot of your shingles they don't hold up to what the manufacturer says it's going to hold up because it gets so hot and so they start to degranulate and blister and pop and um, when that's not done your, your shingles don't last so another thing to really look for this roof has been done great there's no box vents because there's ridge vent everywhere otherwise there should be box vents so um, yeah that's pretty much it um, oh quick let me one more quick fact on ridge vent or, or venting is um, code is somewhere around one square foot of ventilation per 300 square foot of roof coverage or floor coverage so um, you know if you're a 15 100 square foot home, you should have five roof vents minimum letting the air coming out. And that's assuming you have soffit venting. If you don't have soffit venting and there's no soffit vents under, and we'll show you a picture after of a soffit vent, um, if you don't have that, then it's one for every 150 square feet of floor, face, floor space. So, or attic space would be a better way to describe it. So, anyways, that's the technical code on it. And then those are the box vents. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And you're good to go. All right, so we're looking here. Our neighbor actually has some box vents on it, so I just want to point them out. That's really common. That's what you see. It's those square boxes there on the roof right next to the ridge. They should only be maybe a foot to two feet down from the ridge, uh, and that's where they should be looking for. So that's what we're, those are, those are box vents, and then we've got ridge vent here. One other thing we look for is uh, exposed fasteners on the roof. So this is really common. Every ridge has at least one shingle with exposed fasteners on it. Um, we can see this has already been done correctly, but they've actually sealed the nails here. So we look for that. Um, well, you've got a hip roof scenario here. So this shingle's actually been cut, and then they kind of weave it back together and nail it down. That's also been sealed properly. Uh, and the other thing that we see a lot of exposed nails is right here. Either when they're nailing the shingles down, they, mi they missed and they nailed too low, and there's just an exposed nail here. Or there's actual a nail pop where the nail starts coming through the roof and pops out a little circle the size of a nail head. And that's, that's important to look for, too, uh, to make sure those are done. But on this roof, this is good. There's nothing to point out on that.